message today is entitled Overcoming Enemy Attacks. I believe this is a really important uh, message because uh, everyone faces enemy attacks at some point in their life. And uh, what we're going to do is just go through some basics, how to, how to overcome, and then uh, Sherry is going to lead us in a prayer. And uh, I'm, I'm going to re repeat it uh, with her, and, and I would ask uh, you to repeat it. But we need to lay some uh, basics down so that we know the conditions. And, and the enemy uh, hates everybody. Uh, and so he comes against uh, particularly believers, against the Christ that's within you. He, he wants to destroy you. So he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And what we want to do today is to uh, show you some strategies on how uh, to close the door against the enemy and uh, how to keep it closed. Uh, so it's, it's a very needful message for all of us. A lot of people are under attack and there's no shame uh, about being under attack or condemnation about being under attack because all of us are subject to attack uh, by the enemy. You know, the, the demon spirits uh, are, we could call them a person, but they're disembodied. They do not have a body, and so they're looking for somebody uh, that they can uh, catch hold of. And when Jesus came in Mark chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 21, when he began his ministry there in Mark, we see that he went to a synagogue. And that was a place where people loved God and, and they wanted to serve God and they were pious people. And when he came into the synagogue, uh, he saw a person uh, possessed by a demon. And that, that's among people who love God and, and want to serve God. And uh, there's a lot of different levels of uh, that verse where it says, demon possessed could also have been translated demonized that they're just under attack and and so he uh, delivered that man from that uh, demon that day and so the people were really excited because we hadn't seen this throughout the old testament we'd seen a lot of miracles in the old testament and healing lots of other things but not really uh, casting out demons and why was that? Well, the people just didn't have regular uh, continual power over demons. And so God himself took a lot of blame over some things that were bad uh, just because it wasn't brought out that uh, there is a devil. And uh, But now in the New Testament, things changed. We find out that God is good and the devil is bad. Mm -hmm. And we have authority over the devil. And this is a real important message. We need to know how to overcome the attacks of the enemy. And so there in Mark chapter one, people got really excited because Jesus had cast out a demon. And so that evening uh, about sunset, uh, they, uh, the whole city, I'm still in Mark 1, mm -hmm. verses 32 to 34, and the whole city came to his door, and they brought sick people, and people possessed by demons are simply demonized, that they were under attack, and, and so they were so excited because he had authority over demons, and so they came and brought all of these people who were sick and demonized to him, and he healed the sick, and he cast out the demons. The Phillips translation uses a word here they, that Jesus expelled the demon. And this is a really important word, and, and it gives us a way that we can deal with the, the demons, and that is to expel them. You know the word spirit, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament means breath. So the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. And, and God breathed and, and he breathed the words. And so the words that we have in the Bible are spirit breathed. God breathed those words. Well, but it's also uh, evil spirit is a breath. It, it's a it's somebody that a person that's disembodied may have a voice, but uh, it's like a breath. 
And so what we're going to do today is show you how to expel, uh, expel uh, the demon forces that have come against you and how you can minister to other people and, and uh, <laughs> minister to them and show them that they can expel the demonic spirits that mm -hmm. have come against them. And uh, it's a shuddering uh, breath. You just breathe it out and you will expel the demon when we pray later today. So this is a concept. This is an important concept. And Okay, so we see this is what Jesus did, that to heal the sick, he also cast out the demons. And that, that was able, mm -hmm. then they were able to receive their healing. And so if they're dealing with demons that you... They need to ex be expelled out of a person. Uh, okay, so I want to go through just some basic conditions because Sherry's going to lead us all in a prayer and we can all repeat it. And I, I guarantee you will be different. Amen. If you, if you believe what, uh, what we're teaching today and you act on it, it's important. You've got to believe it and act on it. Now, the first thing I want to do is to say that uh, we had some people come to our house this morning and they brought us a mm -hmm. woman from uh, 80 miles away who was demonized and we cast out three demons this morning uh, out of a out of a woman uh, she was uh, under curses uh, she had uh, curses from her family mental illness she was in a relationship with a man that was abusive and so all of these things were demon uh, mm -hmm. forces against her. And so because this is all very fresh in our thinking, because we've dealt with it this morning, we want to uh, give you some tools how to minister to people and how to receive freedom yourself uh, from demonic attacks. And how to stay free. Be free and stay free. Okay, so I want to first of all say, where do the doors get open? <clears throat> and I'm going to just give you quickly five things how doors can get open uh, in, in a person's life so that the demons can attack. Number one is as a child, a person uh, is abused or harmed in some way, and that could be a child in the womb of the mother or even uh, after they're born and, and uh, for several years. So if uh, parents, for example, are, uh, if they're abusive or controlling and manipulating and uh, do those kinds of things, uh, then uh, evil spirits can get on the children. Now I'll give you this example. Our son, our oldest son, came to us through adoption. And we didn't really know the story about uh, his uh, biological mother and father. But uh, he has uh, subsequently met his biological mother in, in recent months. And basically, this is the story that uh, she was a young woman, unwed, and uh, she didn't want a child uh, because she wanted a career. She wanted to go to edu get educated and become a lawyer. And, and she did all of that. But basically, a spirit of rejection came on our That's oldest sad. son. Uh, because in, in the womb, she didn't want him. And uh, she didn't abort him, but she uh, gave birth to him and gave him up immediately for our adoption. We adopted him. That spirit of rejection uh, continued around him, even though we tried to minister to him and, and he fell into drugs. And that was from the mother's womb. That, that was that attack. And, and it wasn't that she was a bad person. She just had her agenda. She wanted to do that. So the first thing is as a child, a child could be harmed, whether in the womb or as a young child, by the sins and uh, attitudes of, of people and particularly parents. The second way that a door can be open uh, is that as an adult, you might be harmed by the sins of other people. There might be uh, a spouse that's abusive or uh, unfaithful and may reject or abandon you. So the second one is you might be harmed as a as an adult. Right? And the third one way that uh, demons can be, attack you, the door be open. The third is that your own sins, 
We know from Romans 6, verse 23, sin has consequences. The wages of sin are death. It has consequences. And, and that might open the door uh, and whatever sin, you might uh, be involved in alcoholism or whatever your sin might be, uh, fornication, adultery, any of those things would, might open the door to a demon. Okay, so those are the first three. Un unforgiveness also opens the door. Okay, so the next two that I want to talk about that would open the door is the occult. And the occult is mystic and magical, uh, supernatural practices and behavior. Anything like witchcraft and, and open a person up to, uh, to the demonic realm, that, that opens the door up. Or your own personal sin can do that. Okay, that, but now the fifth one is the occult practices of your grandparents and great-grandparents. Mm. You probably don't know all of your grandparents and what they were involved in, but they, that, that family history can cause a curse to come upon you. And, and so that's a way that uh, we can be demonized or open a door for a demon to attack us. So there's five ways that uh, I'll just repeat them again. And I'm going to put this uh, video up on YouTube so you can go over it again uh, because this ha is something going on every day. Children can be uh, abused or by their parents or others. And uh, then as uh, an adult, the person might be harmed by the sins of other people uh, or abandoned or rejected or, or a person uh, unfaithful to you. Number three uh, is that your own sins has consequences. And then the occult, whether it's yourself or whether it's your family background. That's five ways that the enemy can have an open door to come in and attack you. Now, here are five ways we can shut the door. So we're gonna talk about really focusing on shutting the door to stop the enemy attacks. And number one is that we repent. You know, when Jesus came, he, he had uh, a message and he was very consistent. They always start with repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, yeah. repent. So what does repent mean? It means that we have, have to turn from going running away from God. We turn and go towards God. We change, renew our mind. We think about him. It leads to uh, godly sorrow that we're sorrowful for our sins. So number one is we have to repent. And then number two is we confess our sins. This is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, uh, the Lord is faithful mm -hmm. to forgive us. Hallelujah, that, that's really good. Now, the third thing is to humble ourselves. Uh, you know, James 4, 7 says to submit to God, submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. A lot of people just want to jump right in there and resist the devil. But what we have to do is to submit to God. Amen. So there are ways that we can close the door. Uh, but you know, also, and this is number four, we have to confess our faith. And so confess our faith. Jesus is the high priest of, our, of our faith. That's Hebrews 3, 1. And uh, we have to confess something by faith in order for him to have something to operate in on our lives. So we confess our faith. Number five, and this is the, the last one that to close the door I want to talk about. And, and that is, uh, simply that we have to forgive people. You know, if we don't have forgiveness in our heart, we're turned over to the tormentors. Right. Well, who are the tormentors? They're evil spirits. Yes. Just by having bitterness in your heart. And you might say, well, I'm justified in holding on to this bitterness or unforgiveness because somebody really hurt me. No, you uh, unforgiveness and bitterness is like you taking poison and hoping it'll hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. When you take poison, it just hurts you. It doesn't yeah, hurt anybody right, else. Right. So don't get turned over to tormentors. These are evil spirits. They'll torment you day and night. You won't be able to sleep at night because you've been turned over uh, to the tormentors. Well, so this is a pretty simple message. There it is. It's mm -hmm. ways to open them 
the, the doors uh, too, uh, so that uh, devils have uh, free access into your life and attack you. And now I've talked about five ways that you can uh, close those doors. Now, when you receive it, when you receive deliverance, and that's what we're going to do, Sherry's going to lead us all in a prayer. Uh, you have to keep the doors closed and you have to keep your uh, protection. And, and there's some ways to do it. And I, again, I'm just making this message very simple, covering some, uh, some ground, but you need to know what these concepts are so that you, when we are led by the prayer that Sherry's going to pray in a few moments, we'll know what it means. We won't just be saying words, but we will know what it means that we want to close any doors that the enemy has used against us, and we want to keep those doors closed. You know, one of the women that came this morning, she said she had been dreaming about closing door in her dream, and she couldn't close the door. And so then she thanked me for telling her how to close the door. Well, the way to to close the door is to repent the way, uh, confess your sins, humble yourself, and confess in faith, and then forgive everybody. And not just uh, people that hurt, haven't hurt you very bad, but you have to forgive everybody. Now, the way to keep the door closed, and these are just simple points, we have to make Jesus Lord of every area of our life. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 12 that if we cast out a demon and uh, he comes back and he founds our vessel uh, swept and clean, uh, then he'll go get some worse uh, evil spirits than himself and come back. So we've got to fill up, fill up our lives and confess Jesus Christ as our Lord. We've got to live by the word. You know, Jesus said you can't you can't live by bread alone. You have mm -hmm. to live by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, also, when when you're delivered from the demons that we're going to, to pray about this afternoon, then you need to put on the armor of God every day. That's the truth of God. That's the belt of truth, of salvation. salvation. That's uh, your breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the sword a, of the spirit, and the peace, sword and the sword of gospel, gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, and the shield of faith. Put on all of that armor every day. Now, here's one. This is uh, number four, and this is about putting on the garment of praise for mm. the spirit of heaviness. Heaviness, and that's an evil spirit. Yeah. So if it, if that evil spirit comes upon you, tries to come back, maybe we cast it out today, but he, he will try to come back and, and check out your house, see, see what you've done with it. Uh, put on some praise music. Go ahead and start praising the Lord. Get your drum out. Start uh, beating your, your drum. Tambourine. Your tambourine. Play your tambourine. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. These are all important. Now, Number four, then, and and uh, we're going to have to keep it. We're going to have to keep that closed with the Word of God. And the fifth one, final one, then, is this. This is really important. It's about walking in the light. First mm. John one seven, and have fellowship with Christians who are in the light. So we have to stay um, in the light. Mm. You, you can't you can't keep around uh, negative people, people who are abusive and manipulating and controlling you. See, that's not the kind of fellowship you need. You need some people around you who will lift you up in Jesus Christ, who will encourage you in Jesus Christ. And you might say, well, when I look at my family, there's nobody like that. Well, get around somebody mm. else. Just leave your family and Go over and visit a neighbor, somebody that will give you the word, that's, uh, that will lift you up in faith. 
I've tried to make this message very simple, but we're this is very practical. Yeah. And, and Sherry's going to lead us in a prayer, and it's going to talk about all of these things that we've talked about in this prayer because I'm giving you the basic knowledge uh, so that you know how to pray this prayer and that it'll mean something to you. And now we're going to pray a prayer, and Sherry's going to lead us in this, and all we have to do is repeat it. Now, later on, uh, if you need to come back to this message, it'll be on YouTube. I will uh, post it on YouTube uh, by in the morning uh, so that you can go through this again because this is something you need to, to deal with day by day, not only in your life, but perhaps in your family, perhaps in your friends. Like I said, Sherry and I had to deal with a woman this morning. Mm -hmm. There were two other women brought her from uh, 70 or 80 miles away. We cast out three demons. Tell us what those demons were, Sherry. That yeah, the first one was a, a spirit of rejection. Uh, the second uh, demonic force that came out was uh, the spirit of, um, what was it, Freddie? Well, one of them uh, was a, abuse, yeah, okay. uh, the spirit of abuse. And then the third one was a spirit of selfishness. Yeah. And those three uh, are three that are uh, used very often against uh, Christians, against believers. Uh, and, and that is a spirit of rejection uh, where they feel abandoned. They feel that no one cares about them, that they're not worth anything. And then the second one is a spirit of abuse. And that is where uh, individuals have literally uh, verbally or emotionally uh, abused or physically, sexually abused uh, someone. And then the third one is the spirit of selfishness. And that is that is the leading cause for suicide. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit um, shared with me very uh, distinctly and very plainly uh, the third time that I tried to commit suicide, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord uh, spoke to me and said that that was the most selfish thing that I could do. Uh, and that uh, those that, um, it's, a, it's a very self-indulgent uh, spirit where uh, an individual gets all caught up in what's going on with them, their problems, their situations, and, and then that leads uh, into uh, the spirit of suicide. Well, I'm just going to give it all up. Uh, it doesn't matter anymore. I have no hope anymore. And, and then they, uh, they give in uh, to that, that spirit. And so those three came out of this woman this morning. And I am very, very thankful to the Lord. I give him all the praise. Uh, there are, you know, things that within each one of us uh, that need to be expelled. And that's the word that Brother Fred used at the beginning of this message. Uh, some of you are just joining us. And we have been talking about overcoming demonic attacks. And this is on our own self, but also on family members that we might have, friends that we might have, uh, other individuals that we come in contact with, we need to know as leaders, and everyone in this group uh, is a leader. And so we need to know as leaders how to help these individuals be free. You know, the, whom the son is set free is free indeed. And so we're set free the minute we accept Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we're set free. However, many people, they continue to uh, keep those doors open and, and, and allow the enemy to come uh, and attack them uh, physically with sicknesses, diseases, um, anxiety, panic attacks, any type of mental disorder is demonic, uh, any type of poverty and poverty literally means, give us the definition of poverty, Brother Fred. Uh, the poverty spirit, and a spirit is a disembodied person. It has a voice, but is looking for a body. And they're all over 
uh, looking for bodies. Okay, so a poverty spirit comes like a robber. Uh, a and thief. So, as a thief or a robber. You know, that's what Jesus said. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's a poverty spirit. It's a meager existence, living with meager possibilities. And Jesus came to give us an abundant life. Not only life, but life, life more, more abundantly. abundantly. And that's not a meager existence. And so it's not just about economics. It's about every aspect of life. Uh, you might think, well, I, I just uh, I, I have don't to expect, put up with this. I don't uh, expect of miracles, or I don't expect a breakthrough. Let me tell you, that's a that's a poverty spirit. If you say, well, I'm I'm not really expecting my prayers to be answered. I, I, I pray, but I don't expect them to be answered. That's a poverty spirit, mm -hmm. a meager existence, and meager living with and and is settling for a meager existence and meager possibilities. Amen. Uh, Amen. Think in terms of what Jesus uh, has given us, the inheritance you have in Jesus Christ, and, and he has given you abundance. And, and if you don't have the mind of Christ, you've got uh, limitations on your thinking of what is possible. Uh, but let me tell you, we blow off those uh, M possibilities yes. and realize that Jesus came to give you all things, all things of God and all things are good uh, that come from God. Uh, this is really important. And so we're talking about expel. And so what I'm suggesting is violently expel with your the breath, uh, expel the demons that have come to harass you. Uh, I know I, I've been harassed by demons and I believe many of you have. And so let me just demonstrate because this is going to be what we're going to do after Sherry prays, after she says amen, then that's when you expel uh, the breath inside of you because spirit is breath amen. in the Old Testament amen. and New amen. Testament, breath. And so we're going to expel that breath. We're going to, by believing and, and expel it, uh, and, and like this, <laughs> hallelujah, then we're going to expel the evil spirits that have been harassing you, and I can't do it, I can't expel the evil spirits that have been harassing you, but you can, and that's the reason we're going through this process today, is let you know God has some conditions, and we need to meet those conditions. Uh, we met the conditions when we opened the door, when we opened the door to the uh, demonic to come attack us. Now, let's, uh, let's accept those conditions and close the doors and, and get rid of all of the demonic attacks against each of our body. If you've been uh, sick or if you've been uh, having poverty, then, then that's a demonic attack against you. And the, uh, the occult, see, if you open yourself up to demons or if your grandparents or great-grandparents have opened themselves up to demons, then curses come down. Harm comes down to you, not because of what you did, but because of what your family history has been. And so we need to deal with those curses and we'll deal with the curses mm -hmm. in the prayer that Sherry's going to lead us in and then when we say amen, then that's when we'll all begin to expel with, uh, with uh, the violent breath and expel it. And we'll be expelling those uh, demonic forces that have attacked us. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're demon possessed, but just simply that you've been attacked by demons. Yeah, harassed. Harassed by them. We've all been harassed by demons. I mean, headaches. Our harassment. Uh, intestinal difficulties is a harassment. Arthritis. Arthritis is a, is a harassment. Diabetes is a harassment. Heart disease is a harassment. All of those are demonic in their origin, where they came from. All evil comes from the devil. All goodness comes from God. That's very plain and very simple. 
you know, if we get that down in our guts, get that, get it down in your spirit, man, that all good comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. I'm in the I'm in the Word. That's in the Book of James. James one seventeen. James one seventeen, and then all evil comes from the enemy. Comes from the devil. It's demonic, and so uh, when we have something that comes and it's starting to harass us and and bring us uh, into uh, a state of distress uh, and frustration. Uh, then, then we need to do something about it. We don't need to sit there and wait until it overcomes us. We're going to overcome. Say it with me. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Hallelujah. You believe that in your heart. That's who you become. That's who you are. Hallelujah. He has given you power and authority to walk and tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So it does not matter what the enemy comes with, we can overcome. Now, one more thing before I, I say this, uh, the prayer, and that is in Galatians 5.1, I believe it's 5.1, that says that we are to stand free. We are to stay free. Stand free in the liberty that Christ has made you free. We're, we're to stand in that. We're not to be moved by circumstances. We're not to be moved uh, by whether a family member likes us or not, or uh, other people like us or not. We're not to be moved uh, by what our, our uh, 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 checking account says. We're not to be moved uh, by the weather outside. We're not to be moved uh, by what uh, other people are saying. What are you to be moved by? You're to be moved by the Holy Spirit. You're a leader of God. That's what you're moved by. You move on command. Hallelujah. A soldier in an army does not just go running off over the hill when nobody tells him to run off over the hill. If you're a soldier, you are waiting on your command. And so whatever the spirit of the Lord says to you, you do it. Hallelujah. Don't wait around. Don't say, well, I'll do it tomorrow, Lord. I'll do it the next day, Lord. He's telling you to pray for someone. You need to pray for someone. If he tells you to, to give to someone, then you give to someone. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about this word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, now, there, there's one other thing I want to say. It's coming up in me. And that is, you might think, well, I, I, if a sickness comes, I'm going to run to the doctor and get some pills for it. What, whatever comes, I'm going to uh, go first to the doctor. But you know, Asa uh, sought the doctors first and he died. Uh, we're told mm -hmm. to seek first the kingdom. Hallelujah. We're not supposed to seek first the doctors. Seek first the kingdom. The kingdom. It, it's always in the kingdom. Always look in the kingdom first. And then, then if you have to go to the doctor and get something cut out, go to the doctor and get it cut out. But first, seek the, the first king, the, kingdom. the kingdom. We have to seek first the kingdom. A and that is we stand by faith and we confess our faults and, and we cry out uh, what our faith is, what we're believing, and we forgive pe people that have hurt us and harmed us Amen. because we do not want to be turned over to the tormentors. And I tell you, there's a lot of people going to the doctors and going through surgery and going through the test, and you look at it, there's a lot of torment in that. Amen. You do not want to be turned over to the tormentor, <coughs> get rid of all the unforgiveness and bitterness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm ready. Hallelujah. You ready? Okay. I'm going to repeat after Sherry. You, you can keep your microphone muted and you can just repeat there at home or wherever you are. Uh, but I'm going to repeat after her. And if you want to be delivered from demons, then you repeat 
and learn how to do this so you can set other people free. Amen. Now, the first part of the prayer is about acknowledging Jesus Christ. The second part of the prayer is about forgiving those that have hurt us. The, set, the, the next part of the prayer is about uh, renouncing anything that uh, we've ever done uh, in the territory uh, of, the, of Satan, of the devil, such as witchcraft, horoscopes, uh, working with roots, spells, no, no, drugs, 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 alcohol, open, drugs open up to yeah. the demonic. Okay. And then we're going to, uh, the prayer goes into about the, uh, just releasing any curse uh, that has been on your life from your ancestors and, and from yourself. And then, uh, then we'll go into, um, uh, uh, expelling uh, those things uh, you know that the enemy has tried to do so let's begin you uh, repeat after me uh, after uh, just listen to brother Fred and, and once she says amen we're all going to blow very hard to get rid of any demonic attacks okay okay Lord Jesus I believe Lord Jesus I believe that you are the son of God that you are the son of God the only way to God. The only way to God. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. You rose again. You rose again. And you show me mercy. And you show me mercy. And grace. And grace. I believe. I believe. That you have forgiven me. That you have forgiven me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. And I am your child. And I am your child. And I receive myself. And I receive myself. Because you receive me. Because you receive me. Now, Lord, you know that I have some special issues. Now, Lord, you know that I have some special issues. And I have had demonic attacks. And I have had demonic attacks. But I want to get rid of all of those attacks. But I want to get rid of all of those attacks. First of all. First of all, I forgive. I forgive every person. Every person who has wronged me. Who has wronged me? Who has harmed me? Who has harmed me? I forgive them now. I forgive them now. Now we're going to pause here for just a, a few seconds and if if someone comes to your your thoughts, I want you just to say out loud their their name. And, and that you forgive that person. Now you forgive by faith. And so just, just do that right now. Just do that right now. All right, let's continue. Lord, I have forgiven these people. Lord, I have forgiven these people. I lay down. I lay down. All bitterness. All bitterness. All hatred. All hatred. All resentment. All resentment. All rebellion. All rebellion. I believe. I believe. By faith. By faith. That I have forgiven these people. That I have forgiven these people. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. I renounce. I renounce. Any contact any contact with the occult with the occult with any of satan's devices with any of satan's devices any secret organization any secret organization any witchcraft any witchcraft i repent i repent right now right now and i turn my life and i turn my life back to the lord back to the lord and now we're going to deal with the curses. And now we're going to deal with the curses. <laughs> Lord, any curse over my life. Lord, any curse over my life. From my ancestors. From my ancestors. Or that I have brought on myself. That I have brought on myself. I nail it to the cross. I nail it to the cross. Because you redeemed me. Because you redeemed me. From the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Because you were nailed on the cross. Because you were nailed on the cross. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. 
And I receive your blessings right now. And I receive your blessings right now. Every evil spirit. Every evil spirit. That has tried to come. That has tried to come. And attack my mind. And attack my mind. My soulish area. My soulish area. My body. My body. My family. My family. My finances. My finances. My ministry. My ministry. Has to go now. Has to go now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, Lord. And I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now we expel it. Amen. Hallelujah. See yourself free. See yourself free of fear. See yourself free. Of any heart disease. See yourself free. Hallelujah. Of any type of demonic attack. You have been set free. In Jesus name. Now. This is just what I'm going to pray at the end. You don't have to repeat it. Lord. I take dominion. Over every demonic force that has been expelled. In Jesus' name, I command them to go and not to return. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And Lord, I speak blessings to everyone on this session tonight, on this today. Blessings upon blessings, Lord, that they will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in their storehouse. In Jesus' name. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you and I praise you for it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Overcoming demonic attacks. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Depression is a demonic attack. It has to go in Jesus' name. Stress has to go. In Jesus' name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord forever. Sinus problems. Uh, right now, they have to go in Jesus' name. Woo! Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there's also just a, a... Some of you feel like if you're not uh, busy doing something, uh, that you're not... at um, working in the kingdom. Uh, but let me tell you something. Sometimes the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. That's a word for six people. Six people out of 13. This is what the Lord is saying to you. Be still and know that I am God. You don't have to be busy all the time. Going to this meeting, going to that meeting, going uh, what, whatever, uh, whatever you're doing. The Lord says to you, be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, there are two individuals that you've been having dreams. You've been having uh, quite a few dreams. And uh, some of these dreams are definitely from, from the Lord. He's telling you something. He's getting ready uh, to, to do something in your life. Hallelujah. He's preparing you. Some of these dreams, he's preparing you. But then there are some dreams that have come to bring fear to you. They've come to bring fear. And remember, fear has torment. And fear is not of the Lord. We said this at the beginning of this session. All evil comes from the devil. And all good comes from God. Hallelujah. And so fear is not good. And I bind up that fear right now in the name of Jesus. Those dreams that have caused you any type of fear, uh, I bind it up right now in Jesus' name. I release a peace to come to you. I release a peace of mind to come to you. 